Hi there, Charger family. This is Mrs. Boyd at Mrs. Boyd's Math Room. Thanks for joining me today for inductive reasoning and conjectures. This is pretty much a story of logic and patterns, kind of the definition of math. It's what my dreams are made of, Induct inductive reasoning and conjectures. Don't make fun. Let's get started. All right, so first, what is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning is when we are using a number of precise examples to arrive at a conclusion. So it's like we see um, an example of something and how it changes over time. And then we use, man, my handwriting so awful. I'm so sorry. We use a number of precise examples to arrive at a conclusion. That's what that says. Holy cow, it's really bad. All right, let's do one example and then we're going to do a couple together. We've got this, this series of numbers, two, five, eight, 11, 14. We look at this. We say, okay, uh, if I want to get from two to five, I have to add three. If I want to get from five to eight, I want to add three again. Eight to 11, I, continue, I add three. 11 to 14, I add three. So it kind of looks like the rule of this is adding three. So the next term of the sequence can be found by adding three. That means the next term would be 17. Okay, pause here. See if you can look at these first four um, sequences and if you can figure out what the pattern is and then the next term. So pause, do it yourself. Okay, let's scoot on down here. Make a conjecture about the pattern and list the next term. Well, to get from five to negative 10, I have to subtract 15. Negative 10 to negative 25, I subtract 15. Negative 25 to negative 30, I subtract 15. So it looks like my rule is to subtract 15. And the next term in this sequence will be negative 55. Very nice. Um, on this next one, to get from 0.25 to 1, I add 0.75. From 1 to 4, I add 3. Well, that's not the rule. If I want to get from 0.25 to 1, I can also multiply by 4. To get from 1 to 4, I can multiply by 4. 4 to 16, I multiply by 4. So this looks like my rule is multiply by four, that, uh, that's four, goodness gracious. That makes my next term uh, 64. Number three, to get from 25 to five, I subtract 20. If we get to five to one, I subtract four. Well, those are not the same. So I can erase there. Um, to get from 25 to five, I can also divide by five. From five to one, I divide by five. From one to point two, I divide by five. So it looks like my rule is divide by five. That makes my next term 
colon, 0 0.04. Last but not least, oh, here's my favorite. To get from one to one, I add zero. To get from one to two, I add one. From two to three, I add one. From three to five, I add two. Five to eight, I add three. Well, if we look here at what's going on, it looks like we're adding by the previous number. So that's our rule. Add by previous number. And the next term will be 15. Whoop, just kidding, 13. Added it wrong, dang it. This is a special sequence. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. It's amazing. We'll talk about it later. So the next part of this is the conjecture portion. Um, and all that means is it's how we how we know what we know how we came to this conclusion what did how did we get here um so um if angle mnp is a right angle what conjecture can we make about that well we know that a right angle means it's 90 degrees so we can say that the conjecture we make is that the measure of angle mnp is 90. it has to be 90 degrees um, pause and answer these next few if you can. I'd love to see your answers and then we'll come back together. All right, so number two, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90. Well, we just learned, um, we've learned about what that means. It has a name. That means that angle A and angle B are huh, complementary. When you add them together, they equal 90 degrees. Um, number three, point B is in between points A and C. Um, imagine we have point A point C and point B is in between those two. Well, they all lie on the same line with endpoints A and C. So the conjecture we make is if we have AB and we add it to BC, that gives us AC. This line segment plus this line segment gives us this full line segment. Um, next, triangle DEF is equilateral. That means all of the angle measures inside the triangle are the same. That, so if we were to draw triangle DEF, it would look something like this. All the sides are the same. That means angle D, here's, if you haven't remembered this, is congruent to angle E is congruent to angle F. All of those angles are the same measure. Um, next, angle ABC and angle CBD form a linear pair. Well, let's draw a picture. Pictures really help me with geometry a lot. So we've got angle A, B, C. Got some angles going out there. And angle C, B, D make a linear pair. Well, we learned a, a, a word that describes this relationship. That means 
the conjecture is angle ABC and angle CBD are supplementary. Because they equal 180 degrees. They form a line with two of their rays pointing in opposite direction. Last one, points D, E, and F are non-collinear. means they're not lying on the same plane. Well, we know that three lines make a plane. So that means point, points, plural, D, E, and F define a plane. It's just all the conjecture is does is use what we know to describe something, to describe something that's happening. Um, the next part of all this is the counterexample. It's using the counterexample is like what we use to show you that something is not true. So it is a false, has to be false example to show that a conjecture is not true. This is where we disprove things from being true. So in these examples, we're gonna determine if these are true or false, and if they're false, we're gonna provide a counterexample. If angle A and angle B are vertical angles, then their measures are equal. Well, let's draw what that looks like. We've got angle A and angle B. I didn't draw it well, let me fix that. So sorry. Angle A, angle B are vertical angles. Their angle measures are equal. That is true. That's a fact. We know it is. Um, number two, if X is a real number, then 2X is greater than X. What do you think? True or false? Make a guess. Um, if it's true, you should be able to find a false example. Um, I want to give you a, an idea and let you see if you think it's still true. What if X is equal to negative 2? Then we could have negative 2 here where X is. We need to say that 2X is greater than X. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 is less than negative 2. So this one is false. Um, it's kind of how that works. If two lines are perpendicular, then right angles are formed. Well, that is indeed the definition of perpendicular angles. That means they're right angles. This one is true. If two angles are supplementary, then they form a linear pair. Got to think back to your definitions of supplementary angles. Um, supplementary angles can be a linear pair, but this is false because supplementary angles can be non-adjacent. They can still equal 180 degrees and be supplementary, but they are not adjacent. So they do not have to be adjacent. Number five, if points Q, R, and S are collinear, then Q, R plus R, S equals Q, S. Well, if they look like this, that's true, but what if they look like that? Then Q 
QR plus RS is much more than QS, right? So this is false because the order can be changed from what is what you assume it should be. We are going to skip number six, so skip that one. Move on to number seven. Adjacent angles are congruent. Are uh, adjacent angles always of equal measure? Well, these angles are adjacent, and this angle is not the same as that one. So false. Adjacent angles can be any combination that they want to be. Last but not least, complementary angles create a right angle. Um, this is going to be false because they do not have to be adjacent. So they can look like that and have a gap in here that separates them. So they equal 90 degrees, but they don't make a right angle because they're not adjacent angles. Um, this is a lot of logic and a lot of uh, reaching back into the, the, defini the definitions that you know and that you've learned and that we're learning. Um, it's just uh, proving something's right. All right. Good luck. Let me know if I can help you at all, and I'll see you soon.